I am Ralph Hooper and I was connected with its design from 1957 until I retired um, one way or another. Okay, well this is the two-seater version of the Harrier, so it's got a longer nose, two cockpits in tandem, and because it's got all this additional weight at this end, it's got a longer extension to the tail so that it balances. But in all other respects, and the way it operates, it's the same as a standard Harrier. <coughs> now, uh, as we're standing at the nose, we might begin with the pitch reaction controls. There's a valve here and a corresponding one at the tail of the aeroplane. And as the pilot moves the stick fore or, or aft, so one or the other valve will open and a blast of compressed air from the high pressure compressor of the engine uh, issues forth. Uh, so that produces a reaction on the aeroplane and pitches it either up or down as appropriate. Uh, now there are corresponding valves in the wingtips which give you roll control and there's another pair of valves at the back of the aeroplane uh, which will blow port or starboard so that you can yaw the aeroplane. Right, if we uh, move down the aeroplane uh, we come to the intake, which is a very prominent feature, very large intake. It's a high bypass fan engine, and uh, therefore the intakes are large. And also we require the intake to work at the highest possible efficiency statically when the air is approaching the intake from all directions, not just coming straight at it. And that explains the size and the shape of the intake lips and also the glow indoors. Right, well, to complete the intake problem, we have a series, of a solution to the intake problem, I say, we should say, we have a series of blow indoors, so called. They're entirely free to operate as the air pressures decide. And when the engine is running statically, then all these doors will be fully open. That one doesn't want to, never mind. And there's a continuous slot on the inside which feeds into the engine face. So that helps to keep the static efficiency of the engine of the intake up. Mm. Above it, there's a boundary layer bleed outlet, which I won't bother you with. That's another feature of the operation of the intake. And above that, again, uh, cabin conditioning uh, inlet air, since the uh, traps in the cockpit like to be kept at a nice even temperature all the time, and we like to spoil them. Right, moving down the aeroplane, we come to the front nozzles. Now this is a unique feature, of course, of the uh, Harrier. These nozzles can be rotated from fully aft to fully down, these vanes deflecting the flow as appropriate. So if the aeroplane is hovering, these will be going vertically. If it's flying in conventional flight, they're aft. And if it's doing short takeoff, it might be operating at an intermediate angle. These are operated by air, again, bled from the engine, operating a, a, an air motor, and all four nozzles are connected together. And when we started with the 1127, the original proposal just had the cold nozzles deflecting, and the back of the engine. Well, it was up to anyone who was going to design an aeroplane around it to decide what to do there. But obviously, with this in front of you, it's not going to take you very long to suggest that perhaps the same thing could be done with the hot end of the engine. Uh, and that was very much a job for Bristol's, although originally there was a suggestion that we might do that at Hawker's, since it involved very hot flows and uh, high temperature alloys, they had much more experience of this than we did. Okay, well, we've moved back to the rear nozzle, very similar in principle to the uh, cold nozzle, so-called cold nozzles. They're really quite hot, they're about uh, 100 degrees centigrade with the engine running flat out. But this is 700 degrees, something like that. Don't want to be standing where I am at the moment if it's running. And we have to protect all the rest of the aeroplane, of course, from that heat. So this uh, gas deflector here is quilted so that it expands smoothly and it's hinged to move this way. And the whole of the side of the rear fuselage here is made of titanium because that resists heat very much better than 
the light alloys do. Right. <clears throat> well, all good aeroplanes should have a tailplane, and that's what this is. It's an all-moving tailplane. No, no separate elevations. Normal fin and rudder. Right, this long extension at the back of the fuselage is peculiar to the two-seater to compensate for the additional weight at the front end. But the reaction control valves underneath here and on either side is exactly the same as the single-seater. These valves move in unison with the pilot's rudder pedals and the rudder and fin there and to send a blast of air either to port or starboard to cause the aeroplane to change direction. And underneath here there's a pitch valve which works in unison with the front uh, pitch valve and between them they will cause the aeroplane either to move nose up or nose down. We have uh, one of these valves available here. This in, front, in fact is the front pitch valve, so it's taking high pressure air from the engine. Uh, this is connected up simply to the pilot stick and the shutter either has it closed or can open it fully. Very simple. The wingtip valve is a little bit more complicated because uh, when the pilot makes an extreme demand then the flow goes down to both wings. One blows up and the other blows down. Right, end of today's lesson.